Hey, this is the radio station, 1150 AM. Right now it is on uh, STA. This is a, what you might call a home-built transmitter. It's 50 watts, yeah, made by myself. And we've used it in a couple of radio stations already, and it just works flawlessly. And uh, here it is again on 1150. Uh, this is a temporary, again, a temporary transmitter site. And hope I have enough light to look at the back of the transmitter. Yeah, there's some. Yeah. There's a uh, one tube. Well, actually, has two tubes. One there, and one over the back. And uh, so also, it looks work, looks funny. Looks ugly. External modulator here and processing. Look at that. Here's a audio amplifier. This is like a 400, 500 watt amp. We're just using very little of it to uh, to drive the to modulate the transmitter. And of course, we have the typical um, Innovonix 222 uh, processor along with a compressor we put the two together it sounds pretty darn good and uh, of course over here right now the audio is being taken from this computer and through a wireless internet feed into the board along with a microphone to make announcements things like that right now they're just playing some music and we'll go back to the transmitter over here notice the oscilloscope pattern. Really nice AM. And uh, for 50 watts it doesn't do too bad. Yeah, so. And since everything's so hot on these summer days, we got fans all over. One point for the constant solar transformer over here. Yeah, those things get real hot. Uh, and then the fan to keep these things cool just a little bit and this is again plate modulated and I have a plate modulation transformer inside this can of oil and also the modulator reactance choke which is like 40 henries that's my external modulator and that knob back there that's to adjust the plate voltage and we're setting the frequency which I can't see back there it's too dark but uh, it's being set by a uh, S-Tran, um, it's got a PLL in it, so we can feed that. Anyway, that again <coughs> is the uh, transmitter. i just seen it here. And the light's a little better there. So, yeah, this is a pretty minimal operation. And as you can see, let's see here. So we come out all the way over here to the antenna system. We look up, and it's a uh, harnessed fixed to that uh, light pole, about 35 foot up, and we have what you cannot see radials that go down each direction. We're coming back down the pole, I'll see if we can, I can see if I can get another angle of that. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's it's top loaded, capacitive hat. And down here, of course, the ATU. It looks pretty minimal, really. Uh, <laughs> that wire is, goes to the input, of the or actually the uh, output to the antenna here. This is the base of the antenna. The you might call it the dipole, a top-loaded antenna. And I had to rig up a counterbalance here to keep it taut just for now you know as you can see the wind blows profusely out here and changes the tuning of the antenna and watch the plate current go up and down a little bit and that's uh, no fun but it's, that's the woes of a short antenna now I'm going to gently try to avoid this wire here because that's got the RF on it and it gets hot <laughs> even at 50 watts so we'll take the lid off of the ATU you can see in here, got a 
coil, a couple of capacitors basically. <clears throat> That's all you need. Just um, get over here on this side. It's the Pi Tuning Network. That's what I ended up with. And uh, actually works quite nicely. Brings the SWR down to perfect one to one as we would expect an ATU to do. As you can hear, the wind's pretty blowing pretty bad out here. But it usually does blow bad out here. Let's see if we can get a. Well, anyway, this is the output here to the antenna. Comes around here. As you can see, very small stuff. I made insulators, of course, out of PVC. it from the elements. And the ground system, well that was interesting. Well first of all the, uh, before I do that, it should be right over here. Now we have this ground connection. As you can see I've used uh, copper strapping or copper clad strapping. This is inexpensive and it works very well for running grounding uh, in a situation like this. And also got a common mode choke to take out the common mode DC component which is very prevalent out here and we need that so and it's RG58 high grade RG58 which is okay for 50 50 watts anyway that ground system goes to come over here so it goes over to the the side of the building over there. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Yeah. The side of the building comes down. Also attaches right here. I got a main ground system that attaches to this light pole. Okay. So I fastened it here real nicely with, uh, you know, I uh, brushed all that off, get the oxidation off the copper and put that there. So that's our main ground. So what do we do as a counterpoise? Got it again, we got it going to the trans, uh, to the um, what I call this ATU, and of course we follow this grounding strap right over here to the our counterpoise, which of course is this chain link fence, and right down here we got a, a wire I call it, it attaches onto this wire here, and that goes the entire length of the fence, which. Uh, you can't see it here, but uh, it surrounds the compound quite nicely. So we've got a lot of counterpoise. And uh, so I'm going to see if we can get that edge wire there, that cable, that uh, oops, trip here. Let's see if we can go over there to it. Of course, this metal building is grounded too. Let's see. Here's the other end, uh, again a homemade insulator and a spring load. This, this ties the one end of the dipole which goes all the way over to that lamp pole over there. And uh, it's basically not really a dipole. It's a, both feeders go up but they're attached at the bottom at the same place on this antenna. We've got a big capacity hat. Uh, top-loaded 30-foot antenna, basically. Uh, you can see it here. Around here. Yep, there's mercury. <laughs> Got to have those. And the other side of the wire goes over, over that direction. I guess I could get over there and look at it. See if we can keep that in the view there. Let's have a look at that. These are probably 60 feet, these tie-offs. Yeah, that one looks good. Here's the other end. As you can see, there's a spring, and uh, it's tied off to the fence post there, and that's hot RF on that side. And again, it goes all the way over to the lamp post, way over there. A lot of wind, you know. <laughs>
you can see here again. So well, that's where we leave off here. Again, here's the uh, transmitter shack. That's it.